You know, if you've never been to Israel, there's something that you're missing. A lot of people, a lot of people, most people that I've talked to about this say the same exact thing. When you come to Israel, it feels like home. So today I want to tell you a story about new immigrants coming to Israel and how in the midst of this war, they find new patriotism. Being an immigrant is not easy. Believe me, I know. I have experienced it four times. I was born in Soviet Russia and then my family moved to the States when I was 12. I lived there for the next nine years and then I moved back to Russia, which I consider a second immigration because it was no longer the Soviet Union, it was Russia, everything was different, I had left it as a kid. It was a complete and big change for me, a change that I couldn't really handle, I didn't fit in, I felt, I didn't feel Russian when I went back to Russia. People questioned my accent, people questioned my English accent too, but there I had a Russian, I had an English accent in Russia, whatever. So I only lived there for two and a half years. All I had time to do is go to school and find a girl to marry. Then we went to live in Mexico for 14 years. That was an immigration. And that was a whole different experience. And probably about a year before we made the decision to move away from Mexico, if you'd asked me, I would probably say, Viva Mexico, I'm staying. But things changed very drastically for us over there. And we moved. And I've been in Israel ever since, six years now. So I've been an immigrant ever since I can remember, and I've been around immigrants this whole time. And here with the organization that I work with, we deal a lot with immigrants and refugees. When the war in Ukraine started, we did a lot of projects to, to help uh, bring people and help people settle here. And I'm still dealing with a lot of immigrants and refugees. And I've never heard this from the immigrants in Mexico. I've never heard this in the States. There's a funny thing about immigrants. Everybody misses their home. Nobody ha nobody's patriotic back home before they immigrate to another country. But they come to this country and they hang around with people, expats from their own country. And it's always like, oh yeah, it was so much better back home. We did things better. People are better. Food is better. All these things are better until you go back for the first time and it's like, it's not any better. Well, here in Israel, it's a completely different rhetoric. I'm not saying that people don't have trouble here. You've heard all these stories. It's plenty of trouble, just like anywhere else. But something happens during immigration. I actually heard some studies about how people, there's, there's an emotional break and, a, and people, a person who is able to, to immigrate somewhere actually passes like this barrier and it's, it's easier for him to make other big changes in his life. Many different things about immigrants, immigration. But people coming here, like I said, it's not all easy and it's not all great examples and people have had i'll tell you some stories about the drug problem in israel <laughs> it's bad and most of the people on the street i go to help a, a soup kitchen here in tel aviv most of the people on the street are russian speakers so being an immigrant is both risky and dangerous and a lot of people don't have a good time with that but those that do they all say the same thing I come to Israel and I was scared to do it and I was I didn't know how it was going to pan out but as soon as I came here I felt that I came home. I felt that I came to my people and I felt that I came to the right place. And when you feel like that it makes all the difficulties and all the hardships and all the struggles not easier of course but your attitude changes towards them and you're able to get through things and move forward. So I met the single mother of a, an adult son um adult he was 17 or something when i met him they were refugees from ukraine the war started the son was like 16 17 they were afraid that he would get drafted soon into the and be dragged into this war so they leave and they come to israel and things are difficult and things you know you have to adjust and she's a single mother and she is trying to find work and she was uh she's like an accountant and it's hard to be an accountant when you don't speak the language so it, she has to take language courses and she has to find the ways to make money and it's always jobs that you probably wouldn't do as a professional uh, you, you, you want a better job so things are difficult and then the war starts and of course you freak out you just came from a war and you came into a country looking for refuge and another war breaks out and they're also in the city with a big Arabic population and in past wars and past escalations there have been cases of violence when the Arabic population tried to support the, the cause or whatever. It's not happened uh, lately. Things are changing slowly I think but anyway. In November when the war just started here in Israel they had been in the country for about a year by, that, by then and the son 
was turning 18 and he was already being called up to uh, to the army because there's a mandatory military draft and everybody when you turn 18 everybody gets called up and i asked him what do you feel about that going to the army you just escaped ukraine so that you didn't have to go to the army and he says i came here to my country to my people and I'm willing to go and protect it. There's a newfound patriotism. I see it all the time. People leave their country because they're not patriots, because they feel abandoned by their government, because they feel that they're being dragged into uh, things and being put in danger by their government that never did something for them and now wants them to serve the country. With all that, they come here and here they find patriotism. And I wish that for everybody. I wish everybody came to Israel. It has to be like in the 21st century, Israel is such a hot topic and, and such a, a cause for division and such a, a, a bone in the throat of politicians and uh, rally goers. I wish everybody just came here to feel, to see, and to understand. When the war in Ukraine started, 200,000 people came from Ukraine. These are Jews that are able to make, uh, it's called Aliyah. It's the law of return. If you are a Jew or a son of a Jew or a grandson of a Jew, then you're able to come to, to live in this country and have all the rights to, to be a citizen of it. And 200,000 people left Ukraine and came here. And that was only the first months of the war. Over the last two years, I'm not sure what that statistic is like, but a lot of people came here, and if you talk to all of those, obviously I have not talked to the 200,000 people personally, but I have a pretty good sample of that population. And I venture to say that 95% of them say they came home. You can say a lot against Israel. I could say plenty against it. But I have to say this. Come to Israel and feel for yourself before you take anybody else's word for it. Not even my word for it. I'm just saying. And that's my story for today. Come back tomorrow and I'll tell you another one.